Yeah. 
For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from
We did it. We did it. An extraordinary 20 years of history. You made it. I can't believe it. This is amazing. We have great joy in celebrating with you. Congratulations, I have family. Congratulations on the first 20 years. Congratulations. Congratulations on 20 years. We wish you a happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, I have Kansas City. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. A happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary, Mike, Diana, and the entire IHOP KC team. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, IHOP. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, IHOP. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, IHOP. God bless and happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, IHOP. Let's go another 20, another 50. We pray the next 20 years will be more powerful, more impactful than what you've ever seen. Happy 20th birthday, IHOP Casey. You've shifted history, and we'll never forget this birthday. I'm David Slyker, and this is our 20th anniversary, IHOP KC, 20 years of worship, prayer, nonstop, two in the morning, Christmas morning. Here we are celebrating as a family. It is dear to us that our families here, different ones that have served over the years, this is one of the most meaningful moments for us to be able to rejoice before the Lord together. So we're glad that you can be with us. were so hungry for the move of the Spirit, and we fed them hunger. We didn't feed them food, we fed them hunger. Speak over them, prophesy over them, call the things forth in God that He speaks, not what we see in the natural, but what the Lord speaks. Teaching our kids Amen. how to pray, hear God, cast out devils, heal the sick. Tonight, we are celebrating 20 years of amazing grace of Jesus Christ. But tonight is also a statement that we're not just celebrating the past, we're declaring that we are going to continue to go on. So let's go. That God has appointed a day and He will not be a single minute late. And the Lord is orchestrating a plan that's going to bring numbers in, but He's going to shift the whole body of Christ to a deep humility, a deep purity. And I believe that the Lord is calling the church across the nations of the earth to respond not with an organizational strategy, but to respond at the deepest heart level. There's only one name on the trophy case in heaven. It's the name of Jesus. For the Lamb who was slain is worthy. Jesus, we love you! Jesus, we love you! Amen. Thank you, God, for 20 years of night and day prayer. Well, I'm Joseph Taylor, part of the executive leadership team here at IFKC. This is Rip, Rick Pavlovsky, uh, the director of Media and Life Production. And I, I, I just have to start. I can't help. Rick, thank you for you and all of your teams. I mean, so many people who gave so much time, so much effort, so much energy over these last week to make such an amazing experience. I just think of all the lights, all the sound. I mean, imagine right now if, you, if we were on stage and you couldn't hear us. 
And the lights were, I mean, what, what they pulled off. Thank you guys. Thank you for your, for your labor. I know on, on behalf of all the media team, we just really find it a, a great privilege to serve in this, uh, in this house of prayer. I mean, it's uh, just such a great privilege. We just thank the Lord that we're able to do that. Uh, you'll see some video up on the screen of just some of the different media team members just do serving and what, what they do, just so you can see some of the faces al along with what we're talking about. Well, we want to take some time. This segment is called Celebrating the Family. And, and obviously, I jumped a little ahead there, but we want to recognize some of the departments and ministries that have served so faithfully over the years to make IHOPKC what it is to this day. So, Rick, I, I, just in the time we have, I would love if you could just give a little bit of a shout out to some of the different teams. A lot of people don't know when we say live production, what, what goes into that? So what are the different teams? And then a couple of individuals, just give us a, a second on those guys. Yeah, there, there's some amazing people. And, and you know that our, we produce like in-house, we produce uh, one thing, we produce this event here. All of it's done with our own people. And they're amazing talented people that work behind the scenes. You never see them. They never come out. And yeah, they're in the trailer back behind. They're, the they're, they're behind the cameras right now. Exactly. And a uh, couple of people that I wanted to call out, uh, Beth on camera one back there. We just want to thank her. Thank you, Beth. She uh, takes extra shifts on her own to make sure one th or the uh, night watch gets uh, covered properly. We want to thank Jonathan, uh, our engineering helper that helps Junia. Thank Christian that does all the training. So that's, and then we, we have a couple of others. We, we get about a million and a half views. Uh, and then in, in a lot of prayer rooms and that. So we have a lot of, of take our feed and, and churches take the feed. So we have a lot more viewers than that. So we want to just really thank uh, Tom Lacey. Uh, who uh, wow. is our, t our uh, 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 comedian and uh, also greatly talented and, and, and gifted person. And we want to thank Adam, who's sitting over here on the jib today. He's our manager. Thank you, Adam. And uh, he's, he's a great guy that knows every position and technically is our most uh, skilled person in the room. And of course, we can't help but just think of some of the leadership who've helped to make the media team what it is to this day. So we just want to say thank you to John O'Hall. Amen. John O'Hall, those, those of you who know, he really set and laid a, a, the track to make media what it is. And then, of course, Carolyn. And Carolyn, uh, she, uh, she's an amazing person that really set up all of the media team from the very beginning. And we just want to thank her so much. Okay, so I just wanna ask you guys, let's give one big, one last big round of applause. Thank you to the media teams. Thank you for what you do, the way you serve so faithfully. We appreciate you guys. We love your labor. Thank you, Rick. Thanks. Yeah, Jono and Sherry Hall, Carolyn, Ben on. How about Junior? Junior, oh, yeah. 20,000 hours he gives every year. He's like our media Spider-Man. Junior's always doing up in the rafters somewhere, fixing wires anyway, and Ben and Mike Hackett, so many. You know, many of them could be making so much more money down the road. One thing I can say for sure, none of them came here for the money. Is that right, Isaac? Very selfless, absolutely. Okay, real quick before, we're, we're just going to have a, a kind of a, debrief over the last four weeks. In the last four weeks, we've had a 21-day fast. We've had 10 prophetic history sessions. We had Thursday and Friday, which were amazing. But a lot of interaction in the last four weeks getting all this ready. So we're going to debrief a little bit. Like, what meaneth all this? What happened? What's been happening? Where we're going? What's the Lord doing? And so we're going to have a little discussion here. But before we do that, our, the mayor of Grandview, Leonard Jones, he came to the early service, and he gave this proclamation from the leadership of Grandview, the political leadership, declaring their thanksgiving for IHOP and all these things. We'll put this on the internet. This was, I mean, on our website. This was beautiful that he came here this morning. He, had to, he couldn't be here now because he's teaching in his church over on the other side of town. But he loves Jesus. Thank you, Mayor Leonard Jones. <laughs> Oh, Dean, who's leading this meeting? Someone like you or you? You. 
I heard there was need for a quarterback here today. What happened to the IOPU football game yesterday? What's happening? I'll tell you what happened. It's that girl who sang, let it rain, let it rain, that misty girl. <laughs> it hasn't stopped raining since Friday night. That's what I happened. I mean, 20 years of night day prayer. Can you believe it? <laughs> what is it? What did you throw? <laughs> The marker, the highlighter. The highlighter. The highlighter. Wait, your biggest, highlighter. best one. Give me my highlighter back. It's chewed on, so don't put it in your mouth. I, I love to chew on the back. I don't know why. It's weird, but I do. So now with two Mike Bickles on the stage, there's no telling how much interruption might happen. Wait, now that we started this, and I'll be done in 10 seconds, he did this Mike Bickle imitation on Friday night. How many of you saw that? And I said, you didn't understand, I said, beware Matt Counter. And some of you thought I'm going to pay him back. No, no. The, what's on me is coming on him. <laughs> he is acting this way for real. <laughs> beware. It's you now, Matt Candler. I don't have to pay you back. It's on you. <laughs> Bring I'm it done. all, Lord. I'm done. I'm done. More, Lord. I just want to be clear. The world cannot handle two Mike Bickles on one stage. <laughs> Realities will collapse within themselves. This is dangerous. There's a reason. Like an inception moment. Where there's a happened. reason Diane's on that end. So, but Marcy still might punch me. Okay, we're done with all this. Okay, serious. So we just want to take a few moments and and reflect together, as Mike said, both Mikes, uh, <laughs> with 20 years of history. Uh, just having re-immersed ourselves in 10 sessions of the prophetic history, contemplating all the amazing promises and, and the extraordinary divine activity that preceded September 19th, 1999 for 16 years to get us to the place, God sowing seeds that were divinely uh, uh, apprehended with simple faith, confusion, uncertainty, not knowing, but the yes in the heart for 16 years so that now we are living in the fruit of what was prophesied, not understood, but believed for. And that's an astonishing reality that God could put it in our hearts and work in such a way sovereignly and prophetically that he sowed seeds that became a harvest beginning 20 years ago, and we are now living in the fruitfulness of that, but we just want to kind of contemplate what that means. We want to have an eye toward that tension and the dynamic of, uh, at this point, at this juncture, how then shall we live? How now shall we live after 16 years of sowing those seeds, 20 years of practicing them in, in, in small ways, in big ways, large sacrifice, small sacrifice, 20,000 staff, 20 million man hours of prayer. And this isn't, this isn't about patting ourselves on the back. It's about asking, okay, but what's next? How do we keep doing it? And how do we enter into the promises that remain? So this is just a group of, of, of folks that can give some language and articulation, people with history, uh, older folks, younger folks, new memories, old memories. And so, guys, I just want us to just bounce around. I'm just going to lay out some stuff, and, and we'll bounce around. Daniel, you want to start? Yeah, I, I would reflect on the last two days. Yesterday was a beautiful day. You know, we went, many people went back to the prayer room, and that's precisely one point I want to highlight, that... One of the videos that was highlighted during the last two days was this ending with Billy Graham Church, It's Time to Pray. The beautiful thing about this community is always time to pray. And in fact, collectively, we as a people serve as a reminder. We will not feel it, but we're shouting to the nation, shouting to the people, it is always time to pray. Now is always the time to pray because we collectively uh, anchor and kept the fire burning on the altar without stopping for 20 years. There is no good time, bad time. In the last 20 years, there were the dot-com bubble, the economy crashed, the first internet revolution happened, and then 2008 financial crisis, and then the stock market broke record 15 times. Whether it's good time, bad time, it's good time to pray. We deploy army to the Middle East, have war, the war stopped, call the army back, 
it's still good time to pray. We have gone through all different seasons of time. Regardless of what is happening to the world, it is time to pray. So for me, I was looking at all these things. And in fact, even the convergence was significant because the fruit of the convergence came from a group of people that experimented from, for 10 years in the Chinese world in Hong Kong. They took 10 years to forge their relationship and give it as a gift to us in one download. But if you, you watch the news right now in Hong Kong, it's pandemonium. The, the very womb that gave birth to the unity movement, the, the fabric of the city is now being torn apart in the fundamental level. They are paying the price for giving birth to something so precious to us. So as the world is, is, is changing and the birth pain is happening, to us, it's the same thing. We go back to the prayer room, it's time to pray. We talk about next year, the sand, 100,000 people in Arrowhead Stadium and then 100,000 people in the summer of the youth. After we do those big events, the next day, we're back to the prayer room, it's time to pray. We are a ministry that always go back to that place the next day. For many other ministries, I'm not comparing good or bad, there's always a a peak of the event. We look forward to that, that big event. We rally around the big event. After that, we go for a little relaxed time, you know, like for a few months, for the next big event. But for us as a people, I'm just so grateful to the Lord. He gave us grace. The next day, like yesterday, picnic or no picnic, it's time to pray. We're we'll back to the prayer room. You mentioned, I'll just be brief, the two events next year. Next July, a lot of you don't know this, but the largest high school youth network in America is bringing 100,000 high school kids to the Kansas City area for three days. And they're asking us to partner with them. They said, we want to see prayer ministries in every high school in America. That's really aggressive. That's in July. Three months later, we got near 100,000. There'll be way more on the internet because they got a very aggressive internet reach at Arrowhead Stadium, and they're asking us, would you help us partner in getting prayer ministries on all the campuses, college campuses, all the marketplace? So these two huge kingdom opportunities to partner with a larger body of Christ because the Lord wants the whole church to love the whole church and work together. So Mike, you, you, this is precisely right on. We just stay here and obey the Lord to pray, and God rally the youth, the generation to Kansas City to partner with us. We don't have to go looking for the partnership. I just want to say one last point. I think the last two days to me is a snapshot in time in the development of the last 20 years. We took a snapshot the last, last few days when we celebrate. And for all of us who join us at different time of the journey, it's important for us to know, maybe some of you feel you come too early, some of you come too late, but take the last uh, two days of celebration as a new beginning for all of us. We are here on the 20-year mark. Let's restart and reset from this point. I am doing that myself. I'm saying I have a long history here. Many of us on, on this stage have a long history. But I'm restarting like as if I'm starting from day one, from 20 year mark for another 20 year, 40 year, if God willing. Yes. One of the things that I, one of the things I've so appreciated just over times like our history anniversary celebration is coming together as a spiritual family. And there's a deep connection that we have both here locally and throughout the nation and across the nations. And we had a massive amount of people that were following us, tracking with us, friends and family flying in from out of town just to be here and celebrate with us. That just so touched my heart. You know, we're a year out from the homecoming, the thousand Chinese that came. They came last September, it's been one year. And I am just in awe of the transformation that is taking place, continuing to take place in our midst in regards to the family. And I wanted, Marcy, just, you highlighted something at the early service that I thought was so critical in that regard. Just say what you said again or. Yeah, um, Diane was talking about the last year since the convergence and as she was talking, this just went through my mind that there's a difference between being together and doing something at the same time. And the, the we do our sacred trust or we're in, we have rhythms, we each have a rhythm in our life. And so we wind up, doing what we do at the same time with other people that have that schedule, but that doesn't automatically mean that we are together. And together has to do with being known and knowing. And I know that sometimes that's, that's a word that can actually cause pain to rise in, in some of your hearts because you don't feel that. Um, but the Lord has us on a journey, and I do feel like he is really, that's what he initiated with us a year ago. Um, he, didn't, he didn't complete it. 
It didn't happen in one year even. It, it took us on a journey, but I think it's, he's still highlighting that. And as we move forward, it's, it's imperative that we do it together. And I'm asking the Lord, I'm actually making that a real focus of my prayers for this body for all of us because we're here from all different backgrounds and seasons of life and maturity levels and and but the Lord cares and he sees each one of us individually and so I want us to move forward together that's our that's our safety and it's our joy that's what will bring us joy as we do this yeah and and I think this is what you said making that your prayer I I just urge all of us to make that our prayer in this season that each one would feel and own your place in this family and that we would recognize as we look at one another and again we've got people from all kinds of different places and nations in the earth the various generations that that the lord would truly it's the prayer that that mike has said so often lord let me see this one through your eyes and i the, in this season the Lord is answering that prayer here in our family. And he is causing us to really see and behold one another for the gem, for the, for the, the glory of Jesus, of, that, of who you are as an individual. And then bringing that unique person that you are here for the benefit of the whole family. This, again, is what the Lord began with us in the convergence a year ago with the thousand Chinese and it is unfolding in this now season that we find ourselves in where the Lord's promises we're, we're remembering them we see the ones that are yet to come we're entering into the grace to fast we're entering into the grace to love and see one another and the Lord is gonna do amazing things with us in this next year and the next 20 years Diane I just keep, keep that because I just want to just a little bit more on this. It was only a year ago. Yeah. And, and we have more work to do. We have more heart connection and revitalization and, and stirring. But God has been so faithful to do so much in so many of our hearts in just a year. Oh, any more thoughts on that? It's a miracle. I mean, the Lord is manifesting his father's heart. <laughs> It's a miracle the way I am seeing and the way I'm experiencing and many different ones um, are saying the same thing, that the, the shift in the way that we see, in the way that we feel, and the way that we stay together. And, and again, what Marcy had to say, there's a difference in being in the same room and together in one heart. It's a miracle that the Lord is doing in our midst. The, ver the very act of 20 years of night and day, that, that rhythm, that rigor, that requirement, it's, it's, it's only natural. We actually shouldn't feel condemned or shamed. It's only natural that that would take a toll on the human soul, the human dynamic over time. And yet I feel like the Chinese came a year ago, and the question was, can these dry bones live? Yeah. And, and there was a moment without us even articulating it where the Lord's answer was prophesy to the breath. And a fresh breath began to stir. And the progression of that picture uh, 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 that Ezekiel had was from, from the breath, the, 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 the bones had to come together again. It was a reconnecting of the body to itself before it could stand fully upright and become a, a, alive again in a dynamic way, there were these stages, and I think we're witnessing these stages. Yeah. We're seeing it unfold where the breath is moving again and the bones are connecting again and, and the corporate body is rising with new strength in the Spirit of the Lord. I just, I kept, um, over this week, I kept hearing the phrase, um, it's something that Anna Blanc, one of my friends that I sing with in the prayer room, she has sung that is, Jesus, you're the keeper of the flame. And that has marked my heart, especially this week, just looking back and looking forward that Jesus is the one that is keeping the flame. He's the one that is keeping the fire on the altar. And he's the one that's going to bring us forth in love. 
And that, whenever on um, Friday night when Misty was singing, um, I just got marked again for the worth of Jesus. And for this is about you, Jesus. And when that marks your heart, then we can like the convergence. Then I can lay my life down for someone else. And I can call those things forth in someone else. The Ephesians for reality of every joint supplying and everyone coming into their place, being grown up into the body of Christ. And I think that my heart has just shifted over this last um, month, even with the fast, in going, Jesus, you are my exceedingly great reward. And if I set my heart for that, when I set my heart for these promises, these the prophetic history moments, that, that is unto the return of Jesus. And it's unto something greater even than what will happen in our city. And but I, I set my heart there so that when these things are happening, it's it's this the together, the convergence, I love that. The Zechariah 4 unto Ephesians 4 has really marked my heart with the worth of Jesus. Yeah, the Lord is highlighting, uh, I believe, the phrase brothers and sisters in the faith. Um, and I've definitely felt that the past year, literally the past year, um, we often, or at least I can say for myself, I would often glance over when Paul writes in his letters, brothers uh, or servants of Christ or brothers and sisters in the faith. But I, I, I believe he is saying that as a statement, as, an, an, as a, a statement of humility, that no matter what the hurt and the pain that has been done to me, and no matter the pain and hurt that I have done to others, because we have the same Father in heaven, we have to come together and actually forgive one another and reconcile. And that has been the statement, brothers and sisters in the faith, because I've had my share of conversations with people throughout this whole year, intentional conversations throughout this whole year, and I'm sure a lot of us have had um, conversations as well in which we have shared so much hurt and so much disappointment and offense, and then even taking breaks from even talking to these, to these people. Um, but I believe the Holy Spirit is highlighting, no, you're going to have to come back because this is your brother. No matter how much you hurt them or no matter how much they hurt you, the offense cannot stay. It's all right to be offended, but it's not all right to stay offended because... This brother and sister in the faith under one father, it is so vital. And I believe Paul wrote that in his letters for a reason. And it's a state, it's a state of humility. It's a state of humbling yourself. I've had to humble myself over and over and over and over again and actually forgive, 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 and ask for forgiveness. Um, we can, all, we can, we can um, often tend to say, oh, this is what has been done to me. This is what has been done to me. But we lack to show mercy as well and, 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 and forgive and ask to be forgiven. But I believe... And, that, and, and that's not the prayer movement. That's not... Right. That's life. That's life. That, that, that's life with God, life with right. others. Yeah. Yes. And that, that should breed um, or bleed into this prayer movement in the sense of we're doing this, as Marcy said, together with brothers and sisters in the faith. That's how we should be living by the grace of the Lord. So I believe it's a, it's a statement, and it's a statement of humility and love, brothers and sisters in the faith. So good. Dana, you comment. Tracy, after Dana, share what you shared in the first service. That was yeah. powerful. I'm just reflecting on the last fast that we did together, and, and even before that fast, I just felt a shift just in our community um, of hunger and desire and desperation. And, and I know that in the Lord, that's this partnership, this mysterious partnership where God gives a gift called hunger. And then in our own hearts, individually and together, we embrace it. And I, I saw that embracing in a unique way before the fast. And then as we entered into the fast, um, I, it was like fasting did what fasting does. <laughs> it answered that 
taking our love for Jesus and one another deeper <laughs> and removing the hindrances and, and getting to that place where the deepest groans actually get answered. And, and one of the things the Lord, I felt, spoke to me the last, it was the last day of the fast. I felt, you know, the thing about fasting is everything's on the table. I mean, you leave everything out there. And I felt all of my groans before God going, are you going to do it? You know? And I felt the Lord say, yes. But you know what? You're not going to break through that wall individually. You're going to break through it as you one another, as you gather around one another and call forth and partner together and say, send Rachel where you made her to go, God. It's not okay until she's walking in her fullness. And that was a different kind of fast than I've ever known. It's together. That's good. That's so good. Yeah, I just can't get it out of my heart that you guys, I, I'm just speaking to you as our church, like there, there, it matters that you reach for Jesus. It matters that you show up and lift your arms and hunger for him on Sunday morning. Like, I feel so connected to that, to that, the, the message. The Lord calls us a bride at the end of the age. He doesn't just say Tracy Slyker. He says, he, he, we are together. And as we will be together then, show, shall we experience togetherness now? And I, I think it just seems like I don't really know that, m I want, I don't know, I want to say to my sisters and my brothers and the Lord, like, let's, when you hunger for Jesus, when you reach for him, when you show up weak and tired and, and press in anyways, and you, you break your connection with sin best you know how, and you repent, and you repair the breach in relationships, it matters to all of us. Together, we'll touch his heart more. As you hunger, we may never talk. We might pass each other in the bathroom, but your hunger, your showing up, your love for Jesus, your reach for holiness impacts me, and I impact you, and it's beautiful, and we feel that in a fresh way this year. And I was just confessing in the first service, and I did this with the women the other night. I've been here 18 years. I've listened to every version of the prophetic history. I've been deeply impacted, I thought, until this time. The Lord is with us. I have sensed an escort of the Spirit for me. I don't know about you, but I, I felt like the, the ministry of the prophetic history touched me in a fresh way this time. I don't know. I think it has to do with the fact that 20 years started and 20 years ended. And there used to be a sign on the wall, right, that said 24-7 prayer in the spirit of Tabernacle of David. And it hung in this church long before most of us ever showed up here. And they looked at it and they thought, that'll happen someday. And then we show up and it's happening. And I, I just felt prompted by the Lord, like what used to be just a sign on the wall, we're living in it now. And I, I remember saying to the women, like, how many other things in our life related to the word of God or related to these very promises are we living in and looking at and relating to like they're just signs on a wall, stories on the TV, like that, that point where we can sort of zone out and disengage and enjoy a message, even laugh or cry a little. But are we believing it? Are we embracing it? Are we sacrificing for it and really putting ourselves on the edge of the seat and saying, Jesus Make this real to me. I feel awakened to that. You guys are like, it used to be a sign on the wall and it's real now. Well, let's live like, like it's going to be real. These promises are going to be real. And then last night of the services, they put a sign on the wall. <laughs> I didn't know a new sign was coming. But those promises, I just have to admit, this is the first time in almost 20 years they really feel real to me. And, and I, I just want to like say together, let's live, let's get disrupted, let's get hungry, whatever it takes for the escort of the Spirit to help us live like those are real, all right? I'm just excited. As, as Tracy's just sharing, you know, there's a day coming when our kids are going to go, the Lord did those things. Yes, that's right. And there's going to be a new sign on the wall. And there's going to be a time where our sons and daughters look up there and they say, those things have happened. Do we realize that as a people of, of promise? And that's why we give ourselves to this. We give ourselves to intercession. We give ourselves to impacting our communities. We give ourselves to being a spiritual family because we want our kids to look up on the, uh, at that sign and say, those three have happened. Now we're contending for the next four, and here's three more that the Lord has given us. That's a real day that's coming. That's what it means to be a people of faith. We say yes to today, what's in front of us, in obedience, so that tomorrow our kids go, okay, what's next, Lord? Where are you taking us as you move among the nations? For those that are new here, 
what we're referring to is for 16 years before IHOP started, way back in 83, 84, we had a sign on the wall, 24-7 prayer with, you know, with singers and musicians is what it really means with Tabernacle of David. And for 16 years before IHOP started, we all said, what is that? I don't know. And it didn't even seem very real. We knew it would happen, but it didn't really seem like it would. Well, they came 20 years ago, and it's, it's been happening. Now we got new signs. Rachel, you've been a worship leader here for about 10 years or so. Tell us what has happened in your heart or what you're seeing right now. Okay. Well, a majority of these people have been here for 20 years and paved. And there's people, as I looked out on the congregation, people who've been here for 20 plus years who laid a foundation that made that banner come down. And um, first of all, I want to honor that because when I came here, I had three young children and I didn't know what it was to have a tabernacle of David. I read about it and I was like, that's really cool. What if that happened? And you know, when we came here, um, I, I can honestly say my kids don't have a grid for one service a week anymore. They're prayer room babies. They're prayer room kids. They were raised, hashtag, it's my new hashtag, hashtag prayer room kids, because they're always in there. But the reality is that mommy and daddy are priests in the house of the Lord. They were set apart by God as singers and musicians to fulfill their duties both in the morning and at night. That's mommy and daddy's job. And so their expression of Christianity has drastically changed. And so they'll never be able to go back to one service a week, if that makes sense. And, and, and what this generation, I wanna honor the generation that's gone before us, they did pave a way. And so right now, for me, my vantage point is I am a singer. My husband and I are full-time singers in the house of the Lord. That is our full-time vocation, that's our occupation. We don't have a plan B, and that's where the Lord's going. He's raising up that priesthood who has been consecrated for him for this work of being there to make the vision of Daniel Lim what he said. It's always going because somebody made it their job to make sure that they get there, to make sure it's always going. And because God gave us faithful leaders like Micah and Diane that said, we'd stamp this as a job and we're going to stand behind it and support this job until it fully comes forward. So my dream going forward is, uh, it's my daydream, I'm consumed by it, is to see the singers and the musicians in the house of prayer fully funded. D Amen? Dave Slyker has spoken, and he, every time he speaks about this, it just is like, yes. He, he speaks of a time and a, and a day where the anointing is so strong, where the prophetic anointing is so strong. And God purposed that the singers and musicians would have that kind of spirit rest upon them and go before everyone else and release the power of the spirit. Amen? And I, I really believe that part of the engine for that will be that the Lord is gonna awaken the body of Christ to see her role in funding the Levites so that we can do our job, amen, with a yoke uh, with a yoke that is easy, a burden that is light, and with an anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. And um, I do believe that there's coming a day, I just finished with this, there's coming a day in our midst when the song of the Lord will be so powerful coming from the singer's mouths, when the drummers crash those cymbals, it will, it will be like a double-edged sword and it will do everything that it did in the tabernacle of David and even more until the return of Jesus. Car Carmelo, yes. you've been here, being a, she's been a worship leader for 20 okay. plus years you know, in her life and 10 years here. You're a new worship leader, a couple years. Mm -hmm. Just comment on what she said, and then I think David has the last comment, or, or Isaac. Yeah, um, I, this past weekend, I think the thing that highlighted to me, which kind of goes with what you were saying, was that moment where we all raised up our phones with the lights, and, yeah. um, and realizing that everybody here has counted the cost, and they've stayed to walk out their calling, and um, to realize that I wasn't alone, and to realize that, wow, these are the marvelous comrades that we speak of, that uh, I get to run with these people. They've sacrificed so much. And um, so, yeah, just thinking about the 10 years, the 20 years, and even just getting to run with David, um, 
kind of, you know, the newbies here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just feeling like, wow, like We so, love the newbies. <laughs> You've so been here a couple of years, though. You've plowed a lot already. Thank you. Thank you. But just feeling so honored just to be here and um, to be a part of the next 20 years and to get to raise my kids here and get to put a new banner on the wall, as you say, and get to contend for more promises that, have, that will come in the future. Matt, you got something. I got something for in a minute, but thank you. Okay. I, I'll do it in a minute. So we just, we wanted uh, just some time to be able to respond to the Lord as a spiritual family. I don't know about you. I feel like the last so year. So wait, 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 I'm going to jump in real fast before you do that. Go for it. Thank you. <laughs> You're trying to honor the time. Wait, because you were his leader when he was youth pastor. I was. But now he's lead pastor. He is. And now you I'm and me. I'm asking his permission. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm asking, if my, I'm asking my pastor if I can talk, but I'm trusting that I can. So, <laughs> no, I think uh, I, I have two wow. things that are really, I'm really feeling. Friday night, Misty's singing again, waiting for the rain. I, I think it's significant that it's been raining for the last couple days. I really do. I don't think it's a joke. I, 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 really, I really think it's significant. Because I think it's a signpost for us, and I think it has been from the beginning. I, I see that song now like a mile marker in a marathon, and the celebration isn't just what's to come. The celebration is I'm still waiting. I'm still here. 33 years old, seven-year anniversary, I sang that song. 30, 34 years old, eight-year anniversary, I sang that song. 10-year anniversary, 15 anniversary. Now I'm 46, 20-year anniversary, I'm still singing that song. And it's actually my ache. Now, I'm not talking about the collective people anymore, actually. I'm talking about you individually. I'm thinking about my friends around America, my friends around the world. I'm thinking about individuals. It's actually my ache twofold that we would still, as individuals, be singing this song 20 years from now. That we'd make it. Like, I just have, different than when I was 33. At 33, I was like, Lord, yay for the future. Now I'm 46 going, phew, I made it this far. I'm halfway through this marathon. Lord, let me make it to the rest and let my friends make it. Let my family, you're my family. I think if you're here, you're my family. If you're out in the nation, you're my friends, but you're family. I want you to make it. I want you to be singing this song with more zeal and more tears and more passion for Jesus 20 years from now than today. Diane, we'll be 84 in 20 years. Will we be doing it? Okay, keep going, keep going. But here's my, here's my second, now that's the, individual, that's the individual response. Like, Lord, I don't have grandiose dreams anymore at 46. I had them at 33. At 46, my grandiose dream is let me be singing this song at 84. That's my grandiose dream. I just want to be singing this song with, with real fire on my heart. Real fire. I want to cry at the word. I want to have fire within. Anyways, for us as a house, this is what I'm longing for. I, I want to call this a book of Ecclesiastes generation. This is a generation running around trying to produce and make it happen, and it's vanity and meaninglessness and nothingness. They're trying to get their profile out there. They're trying to get linked in and connected. They're trying to get known and hired. They're trying to be somebody and be important and build it. This is the most hustly, bustly, busy, active generation producing nothing I've ever seen. I want, I'm aching, I'm aching for our house and our family to be a sign and a wonder in this generation. That in the midst of a generation of outrageous busyness unto nothing, that we would be a house of waiting unto Jesus. Let, let them call us a house of waiting. Let them accuse us of wasting our lives. Let them accuse us of throwing our gifting and our talents away because Isaiah 40, those that waited on the Lord would not be put to shame, but he will vindicate the ones that wait, that didn't do unbelief to make it happen before he came, but we waited. If those promises happen, the one that initiated this story, the, the lights when we held up our phones, you didn't come because of somebody else's testimony. He didn't come because of the prophetic history. He came because God spoke. He started it. He brought you here. He'll birth those promises. Our job is to wait until he does. Let us be found waiting. Let's stand.
We're going to go right from that just into responding to the Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would move upon our spiritual family right now. We ask for your power to touch our hearts. We ask that we would be that people of waiting, the house of the watchful and the wise. Lord, you're driving the bus. You're steering. Lord, the course of history, you're steering this prophetic story in our midst. Lord, we're in awe of your leadership. We're in awe of the people that you sent, the person right next to us. Father, you sent them here. It was not accidental that they ended up here. It's not accidental that they relocated from across the city or across the nations. Lord, you're stirring something here. We love you. We honor you. We honor your leadership. Lord, make us a watchful people. We wait upon you, Lord. Let's just sing together. From the end of the earth, you hear our song. Glory to the righteous one. From the end of the earth, you hear our song. Glory to the righteous one. Glory to the righteous From the end
few days and even last week in the prayer room, there was a moment we were in the prayer room, we were singing out of Revelation 4, that picture where the elders are taking their, their crowns and they're casting them before the throne. And when our, the spirit of Revelation touches us, we actually understand what transactions are really happening. We, we can respond accordingly. What's been so striking my heart is that we are in this First Chronicles 29 moment, which was a time a number of decades after the tabernacle of David had been going. And they were coming on the precipice of a, of a next segment in their journey related to the building of the temple, the temple of Solomon. And David had this cry in his heart before the Lord. And he said, I've given a lot like so many here extravagantly. And I've even given a special treasure for the specific building of the house of the Lord. But he, he concludes in this time, and I just wanna read this because I feel like the Lord wants to mark us with it. He concludes this time and he says, who am I? It's that cry of the elder saying, why do I have a crown? Who am I? We are not extravagant, Lord. You are. That's the cry. There's this who am I, this Davidic cry after night and day worship had been going. And he, he's responding, who am I? And who is this people that we could give all of what is already yours back to you? I just want to read his words as we posture our hearts to give even above and beyond what the Lord has already done for the last decades in our midst. This is what David says in his prayer. He says, blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. For yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all, and in your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise you for your glorious name. And who are we? Who are we that we are able to give so voluntarily back to you? Lord, I just ask, as we just posture our hearts in this time, and Dean, jump in just, just in a moment here. Just, I just ask you, Father, I ask that you would touch our hearts for your extravagance, your glory, your power, your might, your testimony. Put that cry in our heart. Who are we that we could give back to you all that is already yours? We thank you, Lord, I ask. Put that Davidic cry in all of us in this time as we celebrate what you have done in our midst, as we prepare our hearts to give back to you what you have freely given to us in extravagance.